21 minutes for the top of the hour. There are thousands of oil and gas platforms in the Gulf of Mexico alone. Each one is protected by a blowout preventer. First time many Americans heard that term may have been in the aftermath of the BP oil spill. Dave Malkoff has found evidence for another kind of blowout preventer accident that happens deep under the waves, Dave, and all over the world. Yeah, it happens about once or twice a year. This is a blowout preventer. You're looking at a, basically this is in scale. We can only show half of it here because our wall is only 21 feet high. This is a 40 foot device that on installation, these things tend to have a different kind of accent that you may have never heard about. You're about to see an accident the oil industry does not want to talk about. This is essentially the last line of defense in the event of a blowout. This 60-foot-high, 500-ton oil rig part called a blowout preventer, a BOP, is doomed. The crew was trying to install it on the ocean floor, and now watch it snap loose. Here you go, the BOP is falling now, and it's being pile-drived right into the seabed. A multi-million dollar machine gone in seven seconds. That's not normal. Blowout preventers are not designed to go down in the muck. Dr. Paul Bomber is one of the nation's leading experts on oil rigs. An engineering professor at UT Austin, his team helped the federal government understand the BP oil spill in 2010, an emergency caused in part by a faulty blowout preventer. Designed to sit far below the floating rig, it was supposed to shut off the oil spill, but didn't. This new video shows a completely different accident with another rig's blowout preventer. So we showed it to Dr. Bomber. If you drop it, now we got to go fish it back out off the bottom. That, that's a real problem. That problem is solved in this little Louisiana building. My name's Rory. I'm uh, the senior project engineer for Marin. Marin, a European-based deep water recovery company, Make sure it's not worn. pulls them back up for oil companies to use again. So how often do these blowout preventers fall into the ocean? That's a tough question. Uh, every time that a BOP falls, it's an accident. It is a tough question. We contacted several major oil companies, their big U.S. Trade Association, even the International Oil and Gas Producers Association in London. Nobody wanted to discuss this accident that apparently happens enough to keep Marin busy all over the world. Yeah, you could say there's a good average of about one a year, yeah. This is what the damaged BOP looks like when it's pulled from the ocean floor. Probably the one that they dropped, they probably repaired it and put it back at sea. Marin says that's true. First, they use these giant robotic fans to wash it free from the sticky silt and clay down there. Then they slowly pull it back up to a repair ship. And we project seawater down onto the seabed. Why doesn't anyone ever hear about this industry? Ah, okay, so um, blowout preventers falling uh, or, or being dropped in the ocean is, is a, a very top secret affair. So I, I just haven't seen one wrecked that completely. We wanted to know how often refurbished blowout preventers, the last line of defense against a massive underwater oil spill, go back into service. Nothing is ever recommissioned unless it's 100% operational. But we got no confirmation from the industry. Dr. Bomber assures us they can be repaired. Still, we can't tell you who this happened to. Uh, this happens uh, approximately once to two times a year. After a rigorous inspection, used or damaged blowout preventers go right back into service, hopefully ready to prevent a disastrous oil spill. Because if you have to close them, you really want to feel sure they will work. You certainly do, and pulling them up is really an ordeal there, Maria. Coming up in the next hour, we're actually going to show the technology that they use to go down to the bottom of the ocean, thousands of feet down, and pull these things back up. It could take months to do that. And, and then the months to repair it and get it maybe back in working order. Yeah, they, once they get it back in working order, they go right back into service. So these things definitely have to be working, and Dr. Bomber tells us that they, they definitely are once they get to the point where they put it back on a rig. All right, well, so we'll see you next hour. Sure. Now, you may have seen our early investigation this morning about huge 40-foot oil platform parts falling into the ocean. Our own Dave Malkoff is here to talk about it and uh, this technology that crews use to clean up an accident, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, if you take a look behind us, you can see half of the blowout preventer. We can only show you half because our wall is only 20-some feet high. These things are 40 feet high, and they fall into the ocean every once in a while while they're installing them. Take a look. 
The bottom of the ocean is a dangerous place for heavy machinery. Take this falling 500-ton oil rig part, for example. They essentially pile drive themselves right in the seabed. Pulling it all back up again is the job of Marin Subsea. This is at a very slow speed. This is on just on idle. First, they crank up the underwater fans. This is the uh, jets. Then, like a deep sea pressure washer, the fans slowly blow the metal loose from the sticky sand and clay down there. The deeper you go, the harder it gets. Look carefully. You can see the layers of seabed it's stuck into. This hole is 200 feet across, 160 feet deep and it's pushed out of the way by a water-powered fan. This propeller will then induce flow through the tool and will project seawater onto the seabed. So seawater makes it run, yep. and it pushes seawater through, so the only thing that hits the water is water. Exactly. They actually used the same kinds of tools after major hurricanes. Deep under the stormy ocean waves, pipelines toss around. We've seen pipelines that have been dragged up to Two miles, three miles. It's called hurricane hardening. They blow out a new trench, bury the pipelines back in place, and then cover them up with rock and metal. And that's essentially what hurricane hardening is, is, is protecting these pipelines into the seabed. Now, we always talk about how hurricanes affect us right here on the surface, but we never really talk about how hurricanes affect the bottom of the ocean. You can think of it, these pipelines just tossed about, and they have to use those fans to push all that stuff out of the way and get those pipelines down into the soil again on the bottom of the ocean. There's a whole industry that you, you, you know, you think about it, well, of course it's got to be affected sure. by hurricanes, but there's a whole industry that just works on that stuff. And That's you amazing. never hear about right. this stuff until you go down there and talk to them. Right. Yeah. Fascinating. Dave sure. Malkoff, thank you so much. Now it's time for your scorecast. Reese. 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 Yes. Thank you. There's my chorus. The countdown <laughs> is on.